Is this the 2014 version of ping pong diplomacy? Or is this just simply uh, pimped out Dennis Rodman? We'll talk about that next on Get Right with Lenny McAllister, starting right now. Get Right with Lenny McAllister. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. The way we help bring back America and we build the bridges and bring people together is by making sure we hold everybody accountable in a 360 fashion. So let me close with this. Yes, there is a change that we can believe in, but it will never come from a politician or a government program. We gotta move away from the American Idol soundbite nature of politics and back to the American statesman of humble servant leadership that we used to see in politics. It is time to roll out the era of the new American citizen. If we could continue to get some common sense government from both sides of the aisle, we could finally get Americans through the recession, not just Wall Street. We need people that could change the crisis that we're seeing, and that's why, as a proud Republican, I go to the jail ministry. I speak to the kids in the streets, so I'm never going to lay down being a Republican or being a conservative, just as much as I'll never lay down being a proud African American. I feel like a black public money I got coming in. Can't turn my back on the hood. I got love for them. Can't clean my Okay, so like I said, everybody's been talking about this. If you know me, you know the deal. If, if this is the first time you listen to Get Right with Lenny McAllister, thank you for joining me here happy new year to you if you have been joining me now for roughly 50 podcasts give or take you know i generally and especially if you've been listening to me since my days on wvon or you've seen any of the other stuff that i've done in the media over the last several years talking about politics and civics and society and everything else you know i don't like doing pop politics i just don't i really would prefer not to get into the, well, you know, Beyonce said that President Obama is really, really cool and the Republicans should drop dead. What do you think? Go to the phone lines now. I don't do that. I know there, there are some folks that do that with their radio shows or their television shows or whatever they want to do it with or on the other side of the aisle. Rush Limbaugh said that President Obama has a 666 mark behind his left ear and he has photographic evidence to prove it. Call in now. And they give the phone number and you, you call in and, and you react to that. I don't do that on either side. Anybody that knows me knows that. And if you don't know that, you're going to learn that quickly here on this version of Get Right with Lenny McGallister. Let, first, let me go through the drill. Those that are familiar know it. Those that aren't, let me go through it real quickly. If you want to respond on Twitter, very simple, L-E-N-N-Y-M-C-A-L-L-I-S-T-E-R. That is the Twitter handle. Love to get your feedback on Facebook. It's two pages, same name. First and last name, Lenny McAllister, one L in the first name, two L's in the last name, one C in the last name, and no C in the first name. But I want to see you and I interact. See how I did that? No pun intended on the last C. Anywho, that being said, number one, let me, you know, and I'll talk about this later on this week. I said I'm going to talk about Marissa Alexander. I'll probably talk about that on Friday. And the reason why I want to talk about that on Friday, because there, there are more facts that are coming out that I think that it's only prudent to know exactly where this is going for this hearing to possibly revoke her bond. My opinion still hasn't changed. I understand that she, she went to run some errands, this, that, and the other, so forth and so on. I still go back to Zimmerman. I still go back to how Zimmerman was treated in 2012 and in 2013, and I do think there's a double standard. I would, I would like to wait until there are more facts that have come out before I really dig in deeper on this, but my opinion hasn't changed. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to hold off until Friday. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to go more in-depth into the interview I had with Bev Smith. She's a media icon, had a show on BET, Pittsburgh native, so it was really cool to be on with Bev Smith once again. And we basically based our 90-minute interview on her radio show on being a black Republican, which, you know, let's go ahead and talk about that for the first time in 2014. I'm sure it's going to come up, I don't know, at least 25 other times before the midterm elections in November. I'm a... Sh I'm, I'm, that's, and that's the low ball figure. So I will talk about that Thursday. But I do want to get to this Rodman thing. Not because I'm, I'm turning my colors and I'm going to be a, a pop 
Politico type of media personality or, or this, that, and the other. That's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this for several reasons. It's, one, it's catching a lot of people's attention. And, and it's something, I don't know if it's really worth talking about, but it's becoming worth talking about for several reasons. Not just the Chris Cuomo interview on CNN, which was bizarre. That was just bizarro land. It was typical Dennis Rodman. Not just because they started interviewing everybody from Peter Vesey, who I was waiting for, the NBA on NBC, and Merv Albert, and a spectacular move by Michael Jordan, and everything else to come out of the woodwork once I saw Peter Vesey on the air again talking about this. They pulled out David Stern and had David Stern talking about this. I, you know, I'm telling you. I'm waiting for Will Ferrell in his ABA trying to get into the NBA character from whatever that basketball movie was. I'm waiting for him to do a mock interview soon talking about Dennis Rodman going to North Korea. And then you can actually have him and Borat sitting side by side talking about basketball diplomacy with a fake basketball player and basketball diplomacy with dictators with a fake dictator. That would I'm waiting for that because this is kind of where the circus is going. Now I, I won't necessarily to say I won't necessarily say that the circus is also going in this direction with Reverend Jesse Jackson commenting on this. And people know that I've traveled with Reverend Jackson, I respect Reverend Jackson, I love the people at Rainbow Push. Those are my peeps. I don't agree with them all on political matters. And they know that and I know that, and so there's no need to even sit here and hammer home that and say, Lenny, you're a rhino, you're this, you're that. They all know I'm Republican, they all know I disagree with them on a great many issues politically, and as a matter of fact, they agree with me more than I agree with them, and that they just won't tell you that publicly. But it's true. It's true. That said, however, with Reverend Jackson and several others, I mean, Ice Cube did it on CNN, and, 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 and other people saying that maybe this is basketball diplomacy with North Korea, and we were told that we could never penetrate China and get in there and start talking to them until you have ping pong diplomacy and then the next thing you know Nixon went to China a year later so people are trying to make that analogy there is historical precedence to this I say a couple things first and foremost though and yeah there and, and, and let me add to that there are other historical precedents when it came to other types of entertainers because at this point in time these are not basketball players they're entertainers they're retired basketball players that play basketball recreationally at this point in time, that are going over to do an exhibition for entertainment for a dictator. So these are entertainers. So let's throw it in that realm. There are other instances of entertainers going and performing for dictators that did it not just for the money. I mean, you know the story of Josephine Baker and spying on the Nazis. You, you know the song Sun City that bring attention to the apartheid that was going on in South Africa in the 80s to get more attention around the world focused on the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. There are several incidences throughout the last 50 years. Probably, I mean, I just quoted Josephine Baker, so you're actually looking at the last 100 years, well, last 70 years, of people paying attention to injustice and using their unique skill sets in the world of entertainment to bring attention to things that need to, at the very least, be addressed. So there's an argument to say that Dennis Rodman is, is doing this with this basketball diplomacy. And, and like I said, everybody from Reverend Jesse Jackson to other entertainers to other pundits are kind of sort of maybe slightly making that argument. I don't. Now, I'm not going to sit there and say, and again, I want your feedback, Twitter or on Facebook, you know the drill. I'm not going to sit there and say that I know his heart, I know Dennis Rodman, just look at him. There's no possible way he could be thinking along these lines. And, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you could make that argument. I mean, going over there with the air rings, Dennis Rodman has been a showman for 20 years now. This is the guy that wore a wedding gown to sell his book. This is the guy that was blowing kisses to Carl Malone to get underneath his skin in an NBA final. This is a guy that spent all kind of time dyeing his hair and doing all kind of weird things to bring attention to himself. At the same time, and I'm, I'm playing 
devil's advocate a little bit. At the same time, this is a guy that got along with Michael Jordan and won three championships. And Michael Jordan was ruthless. Michael Jordan used to pick fights with his teammates. Michael Jordan used to threaten his teammates. People that used to watch Michael Jordan at Chicago Stadium in his prime would recall times of him yelling at people, threatening people's lives at halftime as they were going into the locker room for either guarding him too hard or not getting him the ball or anything else along those lines. So that guy, Dennis Rodman, got along with that guy, Michael Jordan, to win three championships. Now, you're not going to sit there and say, well, in a, it was because in a fight, Michael Jordan could take out Dennis Rodman. And it's not because you're going to sit there and say, well, you know, Rodman wouldn't have had a job if it wasn't for Jordan. Rodman played for the Lakers, too, when the Lakers weren't good. So, I mean, and Rodman played other places that were kind of good and then not good. I mean, he did win two rings with the Pistons. He also played with the Lakers and took his sideshow other places. So don't, let, let's... Let's not get it twisted. He made a choice to do certain things with Jordan on the Bulls. So when you hear this back and forth about I'm not doing anything for Bay, I'm not trying to get Mr. Bay out, you don't know what he did overseas. If you only knew what he did in this country, which Dennis Rodman are you dealing with? Now I heard somebody say, this is the new Argo. This is not the new Argo. I don't think it's the new Argo. So... Please don't go there with it either. Twitter's amazing. Twitter is amazing because you can, you can propagate any type of theory out there. And if you have enough Twitter followers, it will create a level of credibility and merit that will give it legs. And that, I heard that with the Argo thing, and I'm like, come on now. We're still talking about Dennis Rodman. I, I do think several things. One, I do think Rodman is more self-serving than some of the other people that we talked about with the historical precedences. He has not done anything that we can see over the last 20 years that had anything to do with other human beings at a, at a higher level. And if I'm wrong, tell me on Twitter, tell me on Facebook. But I, I and I, you know, we were having this conversation earlier this week. I go back to his divorce. When he got divorced and he started losing time seeing his daughter, they go look at the research. This is 25 years ago, roughly. Around 1990, 1991, somewhere in there. When he started losing time with his daughter, that's when the Dennis Rodman with the normal color hair, the worm that everybody loved in Detroit. People forget this, too. He was beloved in Detroit because he was the underdog. He was kind of like Scottie Pippen. He was a guy that went to college at about six feet tall, I believe, maybe... 165 pounds, never played basketball, was the manager on the basketball team. I think he went to uh, I think he went to Central Oklahoma. One went to Central Arkansas, and the other one went to some small Oklahoma school. He grows in college. He, I mean, he doesn't really have basketball skills. Anybody's seen him shoot a foul shot or shoot? He, he can't really do ball skills. He can rebound. He can play defense. He's excellent. That's a Hall of Fame type of player when it comes to that. But Needless to say, he developed his basketball career in college at the last minute at an NAIA school, Division II NCAA school, and then gets to the NBA, sticks with the Pistons, helps them win two championships, back-to-back championships, go to the NBA Finals in 1989 or 1988, lose to the Lakers. He was an underdog cult figure that people fell in love with. After that divorce... After the custody situation, that's when people say Dennis Rodman snapped. And that's when you started seeing the piercings. That's when you started seeing the dyed hair. That's when you saw him start hanging out with Madonna. That's when he started hanging out in Las Vegas. That's when you started seeing the wedding gowns and all other kind of craziness that you saw from Dennis Rodman, which one could argue was nothing more than a calculated PR strategy to get attention, to make money, to make this last as long as possible. Because after all, you're nothing more than a rebounder that plays good defense, that can't shoot the ball, and had, I think, a career 55% foul shooting percentage. So this isn't a guy that you want the ball in their hands, a minute 30 left in the game, game six, and you need this win in this playoff series. So you can make that argument. 
But for those that, that automatically jump on this and say Dennis is just being Dennis, Dennis is being horrible, he's not thinking about diplomacy, which, I, by the way, I still don't think he's completely thinking about diplomacy, not at all. I think that he's in it for him, and I do think he's getting some major coin to do this. I'm not going to completely discount him. Not completely. Now, uh, number one, because I, I believe in, in a redeeming and almighty God, and I've seen crazier things happen in the world that you just would not count on. You just simply would not count on them, period. Heck, me being in politics, me being in media. That's just my life. You know, I, anybody knows the story about me getting married to the, the love of my life, somebody I hadn't seen in a, in a decade, come back to school just to finish up some classes, and there she sits. So I've seen God do some very ridiculous, crazy, ironic things where you just kind of look up at the sky and say, you know what, you got a pretty interesting sense of humor. Touche. Touche, big man. Touche. So with that being said, I will, make, I will make this to you. I will make this statement to you. I will propose this thought to you, that there is some possibility that what Dennis Rodman is doing makes some sense. And this is how I think that is the case. Yes, he has gone over by himself. Yes, I think that Dennis Rodman, generally speaking, comes across as being self-promoting, and rather self-centered. Generally speaking, but I never met the man. And yes, you got the whole history of the last 20 years and the Madonna, the, the wedding gown, and the this, and the that, and the book, and the die, and the, and the fights in the NBA, and all this other jazz. But now he's going over with some pretty interesting people. Charles Smith played here at the University of Pittsburgh. That's not a dumb dude. Everybody in that contingent, everybody on that exhibition team is college educated. On top of that, if you talk to people overseas, they think differently of American blacks than they do other Americans. Because a lot of people overseas from some of these countries that oppose the United States say, you know what it's like to be under the imperialistic arm, thumb, oppression. I mean, you know the terms they're going to use. Oppression, thumb, arm, rule, etc., of the United States because you know about Jim Crow, because you know about slavery, because you know about racism, because you know about discrimination. You see how they treat President Obama. They will say these things. So there's a different level of leniency that some of these regimes around the world grant to American blacks. And it's just the truth. Go most places. Go to France. Go to, heck, Canada. Go to South America. There's a different tone there. So now you have, and now I'm playing conspiracy theory just a little bit. I'm going to play a little bit of Argo. Not much, because I don't think this is all Dennis Rodman, and I don't think this is a Dennis Rodman who works for the CIA type of thing. This is not Chuck Barris or um, what was his name? Chuck Ferris from uh, The Gong Show. This, this ain't him. Just not him. He's not going to be dancing around with a Afro wig on, hitting the gong, and meanwhile working for the CIA <laughs> at nights. So it's not Dennis Rodman. But, but if our government was smart, if the family was really trying to get Mr. Bay out of there, if, if we're trying to see what the heck is going on with North Korea above the 38th parallel, with them constantly threatening nuclear war, and, a, and they, they are trying to provoke South Korea, and now you have a South Korean president that's not just going to sit around. This president, yeah, go ahead, try it. We'll, we'll jump off on something. Previous... To this, you saw an administration that, that understood that what North Korea was trying to do was willing to have restraint. This new president, because of her political background, because of the fact that North Korea tried to assassinate her dad, not once, but twice, knew that she was willing to jump off. And for those that are on the left-hand side of the aisle, those liberals, what do they say about George W. Bush when he, when he got into office going after Iraq? Well, he went after Iraq because they tried to take out George H.W. Bush, and he was getting some type of retaliatory measure against Saddam Hussein. So if you sit there and say that this is crazy to think that a South Korean president might think this way, there's a precedent here in America of people thinking that those types of emotional thoughts and motivations come into play in these type of situations. So let's put that all into the cake. Now, you have to accept all this is true. I'm making a theory. I'm not saying it's true. But if you put this into the theory, 
The United States absolutely would want to know what's going on in North Korea. They're not going to get it from Dennis Rodman because Dennis Rodman is Dennis Rodman. I doubt very seriously, very, very, very seriously, even though I still believe in God, so I believe in the possibility of things happening as I wrap this up. You can, you can get people in the door and then use them as the vessels to get the information. If there is any type of crazy Argo 21st century 2014 sequel type of thing going on without Ben Affleck being involved. It's happening through a Charles Smith. It's happening through a Vin Baker. It's happening through those individuals. And on top of that, the North Koreans would not want to look weak. They still need food. They still need resources. They still need to survive. Not necessarily the peasants that they are trying to get rid of, they need their society to survive. They need resources to survive. So in this back and forth game, yes, the, there may be some negotiations going on. I would not be surprised about that. It's not going on through Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman's in it for Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman's going to get paid. That's what he's trying to do. And I, fine, whatever. But if, if there's some wiggle room, the government and people in the know trying to get information about North Korea, trying to see what's going on with any American or any Westerner behind the wall at the 38th parallel. I know it's not a real wall. You get my point, though. It's proverbially speaking. Anybody that's trying to get more information about what's going on in North Korea and trying to secure safety for those that are being oppressed, particularly Westerners and particularly Americans, they're going to use this as an opportunity. I tell you, don't pay attention to Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman is the person to throw you off. You go look at your Charles Smiths. You go look at your Vin Bakers. You go look at your Sleep Eric Sleepy Floyds. Those are the people that... Uh, Eric Sleepy Floyd went to Georgetown. Georgetown. Now, he may not have been on the Dean's list, but he might have been on the Dean's list. I don't know. But he still went to Georgetown. Pitt's not a shabby school. You're not talking about dumb men that went with Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman is the circus act. Pay attention to the other people involved in Barlam's and Bailey's circus, or in this instance, Kim Jong-un's circus coming up. This month. I, interesting to see what happens behind the scenes. It might. It might. It's not going to be Robin. But it could be. Could be somebody else. Just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. What do you think? You know where to find me on Twitter. L-E-N-N-Y-M-C-A-L-L-I-S-T-E-R. On Facebook, you know the deal. Two pages. Same guy. Promise you I'm not talking about Dennis Rodman tomorrow. We will talk about why am I a black Republican for the first time amongst probably 40, 50 times coming up this year. But I, I do want to shout out to Bev Smith. Enjoy the interview. I will wrap that up and, and kind of give you my perspective on that conversation. Great 90-minute conversation on Tuesday night. We'll talk about that. And meanwhile, you enjoy your hump day. You enjoy your Wednesday. It should be getting warmer where you are. You should be feeling it in your heart and in your fingers and your toes. And meanwhile, we'll catch up soon. You know I love you. I'll talk to you. Take care now. TCNGB. Take care and God bless.